Hello, friends at First United Methodist Church. It is the second Sunday of Easter, April 11th of 2021. I hope this greeting finds you all well and looking forward to the springtime weather. These are the readings for this particular Sunday in the lectionary. We will be taking segments from each one of them and discussing them. And the entire time we will be talking about whether or not we are really Easter people. So let us begin. The first reading is a reading from Acts chapter 4 verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So what does it mean to be an Easter people? If we are, if we claim to be Christians and to be followers of the way that Jesus taught, then truly we believe in love. We believe in sharing. We believe in taking care of each other. Um, the, the people who were followers of Jesus after his resurrection shared everything and lived in a community where no one person was needing more than anyone else because they were all taken care of. It becomes more complicated as it spreads throughout the world. Um, it becomes really complicated when they get to Greece and uh, there are like the Corinthians had trouble uh, sharing all the time. You can read about that in the letters to the Corinthians. But if we truly believe in what Jesus has taught us, then we will be a communal people. Now let's go on and read from the first letter of John. We're just going to be reading verses, chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So what does that mean to walk in? in the light and what is it like when people are living in darkness um, the light is truth and the light 
shines in the goodness of all people and God is light and there is no darkness when we are surrounded by the love of God. Um, to walk in darkness means to not be living truthfully, not be accepting of the teachings of God and Jesus. And right now I want to share with you the hymn, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Because to me, this hymn explains exactly what is meant by living in the light. It was written by a woman named Kathleen Thomerson. And oftentimes it is a, considered a song for children, but I think that this hymn explains what it means to live a life in the light. child of the light I want to follow Jesus God sent the stars to give light to the world the star of my life is Jesus in him there is no darkness at all the night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness, shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. So you see, we are called as followers of Jesus Christ to be examples of his light in the world. And that is what Easter people do. They shine the light of God wherever they go. Now let's read the gospel. This is a reading from the gospel of John chapter 20 verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. 
If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Personally, I've always felt sorry for Thomas. Um, I mean, we all have our difficulties with belief. And can you imagine being told that that you had seen someone who had been dead, that you saw die, uh, come back to life and walk through a door in a room? Um, you know, he had doubts like any of us have doubts. But the part of this reading that means the most to me is when Jesus says to them, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then he breathes on them and tells them to receive the Holy Spirit. And that if they go out and live their life in the way that Jesus has taught them, that when they forgive the sins of any person, then they are forgiven. And um, that he's sending them out into the world to be evangelists, to, to proclaim that there is a new way to live and that that this is the way. And the first readings show us that it's not such an easy way to live, particularly if you are a person of great wealth, because you're going to have to share everything. Um, but the he gives them the spirit to be able to live this life and to share this way of living with all those they encounter. So, if we claim to be believers in the way of Jesus Christ, then we too are called to be evangelists, not evangelists like with a big bullhorn, but people who are evangelizing through the way that they live their lives. And the question we need to be asking ourselves is, are we truly Easter people? Are we really living the type of life that Jesus has called us to live and the type of life that we claim to believe as Christians, is the right way to live? That's a personal question that all of us 
need to be thinking about as we move forward through the Easter season. Now I want to share with you the hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God, which is the, the word in both Hebrew and Greek for spirit is the same as wind or air or breath. So to, to ask for the breath of God to be breathed on us, we are asking for that same spirit that Jesus breathes on them, the disciples, when he comes to visit them and says to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Breathe on Me, Breath of God was written by Edwin Hatch in 1878. Let us pray, light of the world, shine upon us and disperse the clouds of our selfishness that we may reflect the power of the resurrection in our life together. Amen. So may we all go forward as Easter people and be true examples of the light of Jesus Christ in our world today. We'll close with the hymn, Trust and Obey, written by John Samus in 1887. This is an old favorite of many people. John Samus was converted to Christianity when he was 22 years old and became very active in the YMCA. 
He later went on to become a pastor in the Presbyterian Church, and he wrote more than 100 hymns. This particular hymn encourages us to trust God and follow him. on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Trust and obey. 